my gig down in Baltimore and playing this uh, new Telecaster actually and uh, a little story behind it. I got my uh, brother and sister on the back there. I had them painted on there and uh, they passed away when I was eight years old and I was the last one to see both of them alive. And uh, he was killed in a car sorry. accident. And uh, she was murdered uh, three months later. And he was 16 and she was 17 years old. So take him with me wherever I go. And uh, the music keeps me, keeps me sane, gives me my therapy, you know? on here the like third Tuesday of every month it's under fifty dollar gig for the whole band happy to have it and, uh, go to Pennsylvania tomorrow and do about anywhere between 15 to 22 gigs a month uh, all over the eastern seaboard just get back from Colorado and hopefully going to Europe things are a little better gigs pay a little better a lot better in Europe and in Canada Actually, just did a show up there, but tickets went for thirty dollars a ticket. So, but I'm thankful for the bar gigs, and, uh, you know, all the little clubs that support me, and the people that come out. And, uh, since the life of uh, road musician, last month they did four thousand miles, put about six hundred dollars in the tank. So that uh, makes things a little rough trying to live on twenty-three thousand dollars a year. I mean, putting eight thousand dollars back in the tank, you know. But uh, I've been homeless for two years, just staying in people's houses, and uh, been very fortunate. I live out of a little suitcase. And, uh, just living the life of a blues man, you know? I just hit my uh, 12 years of sobriety, which I'm pretty happy about. But unfortunately, my 46-year-old uh, sister's dying right now of alcoholism. But, you know, it is what it is, so I'm working on that, trying to get the money together, see how we can cremate her. She doesn't really have any money. Daughter, a couple kids, a couple grandchildren. But it's, uh, it's like I'm gonna be burying another sibling, so I'm gonna have another guitar made and put her on the back of that. But this is the life I chose. And, uh, my break is just getting finished up, so I gotta go back in. I got a four hour gig tonight for 150 bucks <laughs> for the whole band. <laughs> Tip jar's looking a little thin, but it's all good.
it's kind of funny I'm sitting down here in Baltimore now because uh, I had another previous life. I lost the use of my right thumb for five years and I couldn't play. In my 20s, I ended up going to college and getting a music business degree and I worked for a little record distributor right around the corner actually, right here in Alexander Street called Great Bay and uh, they actually, one of their labels that they distributed was uh, Priority Records which was the home of Ice Cube and Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre and I did uh, radio promotion for two years for them and then sales and then I ended up uh, actually working directly with Priority Records for six years and ended up having an 11 year career in the record industry and then I started to play again when I was 28 after I found a doctor who went to 11 doctors and the 12th one this guy Dr. Wayne Altman, I'll never forget him, he uh, said he could help me and uh, made this temporary cast and put it on at night for two years and took this really nasty drug called indomethacin which gave me a lot of severe side effects one of them is depression which I suffer now. But uh, I was able to start playing again at 28, joined a cover band, and started recording my first CD at 31, and put it out at 33. I started singing until I was 35, and uh, things started happening. I played my first international gig in Canada, Montreal. I used to go up there on the weekends when I wasn't playing, and drop off press kits, and finally started doing some gigs up there. I wasn't getting paid, and then uh, in 2000, I ended up going to Ireland one of the record stores I used to sell CDs to. My uh, first CD, Eclectic Impressions, sold pretty well. He said, hey, you want to go to Ireland? I said, yeah, because I can't get you paid, but I'll hook some gigs up for you. And I went over there, and by the, my third trip, I ended up opening up for Buddy Guy at the Galway Arts Festival in 2002. Or actually, my fourth trip that was. And that was that was the last night I had a drink, actually. It was sober for two months, or dry for two months, and then I thought I could have a half a pint in Carlsberg, and I blacked out that night back to the hotel with Buddy and his band, and it was his, I mean, believe it or not, it was his 65th birthday. You probably remember that show. And uh, I just dedicated my life to playing the music, and uh, a lot of the songs I write about my battle with depression, uh, you know, a lot of people don't talk about it. And uh, just try and keep my life going. I think it's my therapy is just playing. It's you know, one thing that gives me happiness in my life and joy. It's the only time my life makes sense to me, whether I'm in front of thousands of people in Europe who are playing this little bar down here sitting in a corner playing a solo gig on a Sunday for 50 bucks. It's like that's that's where the whole world makes sense to me. You know, 48 years old and I'm not married, single, I have no children and uh, don't really have a place to live. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. So it's, it's been a rough battle. But I keep going every day. Hoping life is gonna, you know, just gonna start turning my way. Thank God I get to play and uh, met some wonderful people who've uh, really helped me. Uh, people have really helped me in the last couple of years since I've been homeless. And every single person I've met through the guitar. I had to sell a bunch of my guitars to buy a van because my van broke down up in Lake Placid. I made it to Pennsylvania. Two days before Christmas, I had to. I had to sell two of them, and uh, one of them was to a good friend named Chris Wood, who actually signed me to my first record deal, and he helped me out, and sent me 2,500 bucks in the mail, and then I sold my Les Paul to my drummer for a thousand bucks, and hopefully I can buy that back. And uh, thank God I had the guitars. And uh, I just keep moving around. Last month I did 4,000 miles, and uh, did 22 shows. This month I got, had 22 shows in the book, so I already lost three of them. That's the scary life about this, is uh, you, know, you get paid cash, and, some of the gigs pay 50 and some of them pay maybe 100, 125 per man and um, you know if you don't sell a lot of CDs you're in trouble so you know but at the end of the month I always seem to have enough to make things work and have enough money to eat and you know people put me up in their homes and I have a lot of keys to a lot of houses stay up between Lake Placid and Colorado and uh, a good friend gives me some buddy passes so I can fly out there and you know and then I stay in a uh, Southern Pennsylvania sometimes, there's some houses there, and then my mother's house is in foreclosure, so I'm on an air mattress there until the sheriff comes and throws me out when I do my New Jersey gigs. And I've stayed with a couple other people, but I really haven't had a permanent address. And, uh, I was actually staying up in Canada for a while. It's been a journey. But it's, uh, it's the life I chose, but as somebody said to me one day, a gentleman last uh, Christmas Eve showed up at a house I was staying in Lancaster, Pennsylvania gave me an acoustic guitar and I said I can't take this guitar. He said, yes you can. And he said to me, you didn't choose the music, the music chose you. So stop fighting your life. Just do what you're supposed to do.
keep playing, man. So With no new turns in your side. start your journey. GPS. The road to your life right here. Your memory. Friends don't let friends watch the Kardashians. Do you really? Uh, February, we were hanging out with the guys, and this little old lady standing through and she goes, Uh uh uh, weather man wrong again, ain't no snow coming. I said, Miss, I was just in Canada and all my gigs got canceled. And you know, if I got in the car and drove, you know, it would have snowed and it didn't snow. And she said, Honey child, don't you know sometimes you just need to start your journey? And I grabbed a waiter and had the little pad that it writes the you know, people's orders on, and I wrote down the lyrics and wrote it out on a bunch of paper towels. And the guys, actually, right here, uh, Bob and Ralph, we actually played this song for the first time. Thank you very much, sir. A little song called Start Your Journey. You never know what you're going to learn. Ang angels in your life, man. People step into your life and they tell you messages you need to hear. Happy birthday. 